Hey, what's up folks? In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can easily create a simple pair of glasses in Adobe Illustrator to help you embellish your NFT creations. I'm gonna be walking you step by step through the entire process and show you the techniques you can apply to obtain some awesome looking results, so stick around! Alright, first we're gonna import the reference photo of some glasses that we will trace. So let's go to File, Place, and for this example I'm using arguably the most common frame style. Let's select the image and set the opacity to 50% and then let's create a new layer on top of it. Next we're gonna grab our pen tool and zooming in here a little bit, first thing we'll start tracing will be the lens, so let's do that. Let me just turn off the fill here real quick, there we go. And just continue tracing around the lens until the shape is completed. Don't worry too much about the small imperfections and by that I mean the relatively straight edges that form because we're gonna be able to fix those once we're done tracing the basic shape. Now that the lens is complete, let's grab our direct selection tool and we're gonna click on each anchor point that we've created and just play around with the handles until we have some smooth curves all around. Alright, now that's done, let's grab the selection tool and click on the lens shape and we're going to copy paste it in front, so Ctrl or Command C and then Ctrl or Command F on the keyboard. Then we're going to right click, transform, reflect and select vertical to reflect the lens. Now I'm just gonna move it on this other side by clicking and dragging while holding down the shift key to maintain the same horizontal position. Now that's done, we're gonna trace the frame, so let's go back and grab the pen tool. And to make this easier, like we did for the lens, I'm only going to trace half of the frame and then reflect it. That's why I'm starting exactly from the middle of the frame image here. And using the direct selection tool, just like we did for the lens, we're applying some small corrections and adjustments to ensure the lines flow smoothly. Now copy paste this path in front, reflect it by right clicking and selecting transform, reflect, vertical. And then move it over to the other side by holding down the shift key and dragging. Place it a bit overlapping the right side by just a tiny bit because we're going to unite the two sides by using the join tool. All you need to do is select both pads and grab the join tool which you can find here and then draw with this tool over the intersecting spot. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the bottom pad and then applying some small correction to this newly created shape. As you probably figured, the join tool allows you to join together multiple pads and even create a shape if the pads close on each other like in this example. Next, grab the selection tool, select the newly created shape and let's go ahead and turn the stroke off. Give it a fill color instead, select both lens shapes and duplicate them by doing a Ctrl or Command C plus Ctrl or Command F to paste in front and just drag the frame shape below the duplicate lenses. And using the Pathfinder menu, click this button which says minus front. If you don't see the Pathfinder menu, you can find it under Window, Pathfinder or do a Shift Ctrl F9 on your keyboard. Okay, select both lenses plus the frame and let's cut the frame. Now let's go ahead and select both lens pads, duplicate them once more and again by bringing the frame shape below the duplicates. Change the color of the frame, I'm using this green here. Now increase the stroke width to 2 pixels and then click on where it says stroke to bring up this menu and select this option which says align stroke to inside. Now go to Object, Expand Appearance, and this will give us an edge for the lens cutout. Next, select the frame and let's apply a gradient color to it. Select the gradient, gradient options, and then let's click on the slider here to apply some additional color stops. And I'm going to remove this complete black color, as well as the complete white color. Now just copy the colors that are on this side towards the other side as well. Basically what I'm doing here is creating a gradient that darkens towards the outer edges of the frame and it is a bit brighter towards the middle. And then using the gradient tool directly on the artboard we can make some adjustments to those colors. Just make sure they are distributed relatively equal for both the left and the right side. Next, I just want to emphasize the fact that this frame has a bit of a curve towards the middle point, so I'm going to select this color and bump the brightness by adjusting the RGP color values to create a lighter gray. This helps create a more 3D effect.
And the middle portion is also protruding if I recall correctly for this frame style so let's add the lighter grey in this area as well. Alright this looks pretty good for now. And for the lens edges let's go and select them both and using the eyedropper tool we're gonna click anywhere on the frame to give them the same gradient. Also we don't need too many colors so let's remove one side and then rotate the gradient slider by about 90 degrees to bring the darkest color towards the top of the frame and the lightest color towards the bottom. Again this gives a bit of a 3D effect and shows how the light is reflected and captured by the edges of the lens cutouts. Same treatment is applied for the right side as well of course. Now another detail I'd like to reproduce would be the highlight at the top of the frame here and also the one at the corner of the frame where the arm connects. So let me turn the opacity back to 50% on this image and turn the visibility on the vector layer back on. Select the frame, duplicate it, that's Ctrl or Command C plus Ctrl or Command F and on the duplicate let's turn off the fill color by selecting no fill and turning on the stroke instead and let's bump it to about 2 points. Click on the stroke and select align to inside and also let's briefly turn off the visibility for all the other shapes. Now go to object, expand appearance and I want to make a cut somewhere here to preserve just the top part of this frame outline which will be highlighted later on. In order to do that I'm using the pen tool and I've reduced the stroke width to the lowest available that's 0.25 because I'll just make a path where I want to apply the cut. There we go. Now mirror this for the other side as well. I'm just going to copy paste it and then reflect it vertically and I'm doing my best to place it in the exact same spot as the other one. Now select both paths as well as the frame outline shape and using the shape builder tool by clicking alt or option on your keyboard I'm able to erase the rest of the shape that's beneath the red line. Now we can just get rid of those lines and also using the direct selection tool select the outlines for the lenses and delete those as well by pressing the delete button on your keyboard. We're now left only with the top thin line which will be the highlight for the top of the frame. Select this newly created shape and using the eyedropper tool I'm going to give it the same gradient as the frame but also make it a bit brighter by adjusting the color balance. I want to preserve the gradient to maintain the 3D effect but bring up the brightness so go to edit, edit colors, adjust color balance, hit preview and I'm adding 10% to each color red, green and blue. This increases the overall brightness making the colors 10% brighter. And now finally similarly to what we did for the top edge highlight I'm just going to make a cut for this corner by drawing a line with the pen tool. This will be the corner edge highlight. Make sure the line that you're drawing exceeds the frame shape as it needs to overlap it in order for the shape builder tool to effectively isolate just a little corner. And also we're going to make a duplicate of our frame and make the cut into the duplicate. We're going to select this corner shape and apply the same gradient to it like we did for all the other shapes using the eyedropper tool and copying the frame gradient and then applying some adjustments to make it blend nicely with the rest of the frame. And once that's done, just copy paste it, reflect it and move it to the other side. Now let's go ahead and group everything nicely. Select all the elements that pertain to the frame, basically everything except just the original lens pads. And also let's name our frame real quick. One last step before we're done, the lenses. For this I've turned off the stroke and with both lens shapes selected I'm applying a gradient. Select gradient options and for the angle I'm typing in 90 degrees. I'm also replacing the complete white color with a very dark grey color leaving the complete black for the other one and just set the overall opacity to about 60-70%. to 70%. Let me just turn off the visibility on our reference image here and that's it, we're done. Now let me just show you a quick practical application for these glasses and also a simple variation you can obtain by just adjusting the colors. But first I'm just grouping the lenses into their own separate group and then both the lenses and the frame into a single group which would be our glasses. Select everything and do a Ctrl or Command C to copy and then jumping over here to our dummy image. For those of you that are not familiar this is also a 100% vector image and if you'd like to see the process on how to create it please let me know in the comments below. As you can see I've already created a layer for our glasses in advance so let's go ahead and paste them that's Ctrl or Command V and let's adjust the size and position so they fit perfectly on our dummy's face. 
All right, this looks pretty good. Now to generate the different color variation, all you need to do is just select the frame group within the glasses group and go to edit, edit colors, adjust color balance. Hit preview and start playing around with the sliders. You can of course adjust the opacity on the lenses as well as the color with the adjust color balance tool. Finally, let me also turn on the hair, link in description for the full hair tutorial, just to see the final result. If you've enjoyed this video, go check out the next one in the pop-up banner to see 4 more variations you can obtain for those glasses. Until next time, good luck and happy drawing!